I want to give a special shout out to my patrons, to my Biblios brand, Biblios Sworn, and Bibliomancers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means a lot to me. Hi everyone, Patek here. Today's video is a book haul video. And yeah, I will be talking about all the books that I got in the month of May. Uh, this month, I got 21 physical books. So yeah, that's a lot again. <laughs> and I'm truly thankful because I remember, I think it was uh, the first time I started booktube channel. I remember back then that I mentioned that I won't be doing monthly book haul video because I never thought that I would be receiving or buying a lot of physical books within a month. I am obviously happy about this, but my bookshelf and my limited spaces definitely aren't happy about this. <laughs> so let's begin. The first five books that I'm going to show you, these are Berserk Deluxe Edition by Kentaro Miura. This is not a cheap edition and as you can see this is still wrapped in plastic. I haven't opened it yet. This is quite likely the most gorgeous looking physical book for manga series that I've ever seen. They are certainly not cheap and I honestly didn't expect that I would buy this edition. But after seeing it in person in my local bookstore, all 10 of them, all deluxe edition, I decided impulsively to buy the first five. So this is a photo of the first five volumes of the deluxe edition that I put on my bookshelf. I'm using photo because lifting them all at the same time is very heavy. I mean, each volume is like two kilograms, so yeah. <laughs> But Berserk has always been one of my favorite manga series of all time. I think Kentaro Miura was a genius. It is such a shame that he has passed away. And this manga series has always been one of the best and one of the most special manga series for me since almost 20 years ago. So I'm glad that I finally got to buy this edition. So I did an unboxing video for the next two books that I'm going to show you. The first one is Portrait of a Thief by Grace Lee. This is Illubricate Edition. I'm using the reverse dust jacket because I think the cover art by Little Shimura looks more beautiful than the I actually cover art. I think this one is a contemporary or heist novel, but I'm looking forward to reading this one someday, even though I don't always read outside of science fiction or fantasy, but sometimes I like to read historical fiction or other genre as well when I'm in the mood for it. So thank you so much to Illuminate for sending me this one. I'm definitely keeping this on my TBR. After that, I also got Valor by John Gwynn. This is the second book in the Faithful and the Fallen series. So this one is a broken binding edition and it looks absolutely beautiful. This has a green spray edges. And yeah, this is also signed. And I think a lot of you know already that The Faithful and the Fallen is one of my favorite series of all time and having a hardcover to this series will always mean a lot to me. So thank you so much to The Broken Binding for sending me this one. And speaking of Broken Binding, I actually got another book from them today. And it is Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie. Yeah, this is the Broken Binding edition. Again, this is a reprint of the original hardcover. And look, this is so pretty, right? Yeah, this is the spray edges. So it will match and it will connect with the first book, The Blade itself. And other than that, this is the end paper. And this is also signed, just like the first book. Yeah, with a matching number. But one of the most special thing about this edition is that the naked hardcover looks like this. And take a look at the spine. Ta-da, body found floating by the docks, yeah. If you have read this trilogy, you will know who said that quote. And this is one of the most iconic quotes from the series. So thank you so much to Broken Binding for sending me this one. The First Law is one of my favorite series of all time. And yeah, I'm waiting for The Last Argument of Kings, which in my opinion, uh, up there with the wisdom of crowds, is still Joe Abercrombie's best book. And now I'm going to move on to the next four books. The next four books are books that I received from Orbit Books. And the first one that I want to show you here is one Foot in the Fate by Luke Arnold. This is the third book in Fetch Philip Archives, an, a great urban fantasy series, and I think it is criminally underrated, especially the first book, uh, The Last Smile in Sunder City. I love his acting in Black Cells, and apparently he can write really well too. So The Last Smile in Sunder City and the second book, Dead Man in the Ditch, both of them, I think I gave the both of them four out of five stars. I think they are great urban fantasy, but I don't know whether this is the final book in the series or not, but either way, I definitely will read this one, so thank you so much to Orbit Books for sending me again uh, a copy of the series. The series takes place in a city that has lost its magic, and each book in the series so far has a very standalone tone to it. Then the next book that I got, this one will be kind of a surprise. So this is uh, Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. <laughs> so yeah, this is one of my favorite books of all time, and I did an unboxing video of the Green Bone Saga Illuminate Edition hardcover already. And honestly, I didn't expect, I didn't know that Orbit Books was sending this paper back to me. This one just came to me a few days ago, and apparently it was dispatched 
in November. <laughs> so it has been uh, seven months. It took seven months before I finally got a paperback copy of the final book in the Green Bone Saga. Thankfully, I didn't wait for the paperback copy to arrive. I would suffer. I would literally suffer. This is one of the best books of all time and the trilogy, the Green Bone Saga, is still to this day the best completed fantasy trilogy that I've read. And speaking of another book that took its time, it is this is Wild and Wicked Things by Francesca May. Again, I didn't know this is being sent to me. This is this has a beautiful cover art though, looks so shiny. And yeah, uh, this one, I don't know anything about it, but in the premise here, it said that on Crow Island, people whisper, real magic lurks just below the surface. But when Annie Mason arrives at the idyllic summer gateway, she never expects to discover her enigmatic new neighbor is a witch. When she witnesses a confrontation between her best friend Bia and the infamous Emmeline de la Croix at one of Crow Island extravagant parties, she is drawn into a glittering haunted world. A world where the boundaries of wickedness are tested and the cause of illicit blood bargains might be dead. And this too was sent to me a long time ago. I think this was uh, dispatched to me since December. So again, uh, six months. <laughs> yeah, brutal, right? <laughs> A novel about witches usually doesn't work out well with me, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed whenever I get to this one that this is another great book from Orbit Books. And finally, the last book that I got from Orbit this month, this is a recent release and it is The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. This is a debut novel and I've heard so many great things about it. Even Andrea Stewart said this. The Stardust Thief is a dream written upon a page absorbing, lingering, and poignantly told. Abdullah weaves a sweeping adventure of tales within tales, while laying bare the ways those we love can both uplift us and break our hearts. So Andrea Stewart is a great author. I really love The Bonshot Daughter, and that is a reminder that I really should, should get to reading uh, the sequel, The Bonshot Emperor. But in addition to that, I have always loved a story within a story kind of book. If I'm not mistaken, The Stardust Thief is a Middle Eastern inspired fantasy that focuses on storytelling and also found family as some of its main themes, and I am always up for these themes in fantasy. Last month, I talked about The First Binding by RRVD, and it is one of my favorite books of the year so far. So that book, one of its main themes, is also about storytelling. So I definitely have a soft spot for stories within stories, and I am looking forward to reading The Stardust Thief within this year. Also, this cover art looks so stunning, right? This cover art is done by Mike Heath and designed by Lisa Marie Pompilo. I think it looks beautiful. I cannot wait to see what they will come up next for the second and third book, because this is the first book in the Sansi trilogy. And now we move on to the next four books that I got from Angry Robots. Yeah, the first one is The Warrior by Steven Aryan. I don't think I will be reading this one anytime soon because this is the second book of the Quest for Heroes. Yeah, the first book is titled The Coward and I've heard both good and negative things about the first book. Oh yeah, I'm not sure when I will get to this one, but I'm thankful that Angry Robot also sent this book to me. And next, I got a double. I don't know why Angry Robot sent uh, two copies of this book to me, but this is Lech by Stacy McEwen. I don't know anything about this one. I only I only know that Stacy uh, Stacy McEwen, the author, is a very very popular person on TikTok. <laughs> That's all I know about this. And uh, on the back here, it's written that this is the epic fantasy quest of the year with a sizzling enemies to lovers romance from TikTok sensation Stacy McEwen. So maybe this is a fantasy romance, and I think so far it has been gaining a lot of great receptions on Goodreads and of course on TikTok. And the last book that I got from Angry Robot is The Last Blade Priest by W.P. Wells. Yeah. I don't know anything about this one too, but it seems like there is a plague doctor in the cover art here, so, uh, so I'm kind of interested to find out what this is about. So in the back here, uh, this is a short premise, three between the old and the new, three below the mountain. The priest, trained to kill for God, now fighting for survival in a religion tearing itself apart. The builder, son to a traitor, now ordered to spy on those who overthrow his land. The child, protected, lied to, now learning the truth. That's it. That's the premise. The next book that I want to show you before I move on to the final section of this book haul, which is self-published fantasy books that I got within this month, uh, this is an illustrated book that, that was sent to me by a local author, yeah. And it is an illustrated book titled The Doll Maker. Yeah, look, this is so pretty, right? This is written by Ong K. Jen and illustrated by Catherine Anasta. If you love reading books by Charlie Bakazi, I think you will have a great time with this one. And you should take a look at this. This is the front, The Doll Maker. It is dedicated to the beautifully broken, you are beloved. And yeah, this is published by Shadow Stories. And here, I'm going to show you some of the artworks in this book. I think it's pretty. See? Yeah. I really like that this one only took about, I think, uh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes to read, but it is worth it. The publisher has actually told me that 
they plan to make this available worldwide so I'm hoping that it will be available soon. I'm going to leave the link to their Instagram page on my description. And finally, the final five books on this book haul, all of them are self-published fantasy books and the first one that I want to show you, this is of course, Legends and Lattes by Travis Balgery. So I've reviewed this book, I think last month. I've talked about this book quite plenty of times and I really loved it. I think this is the whole sound fantasy book that you didn't know you need. Whether, you've re whether you read only Grim Dark Fantasy or only Epic Fantasy, I think this one is worth taking a look. It's so wholesome, so comforting. I think we all need some comfort right now. And yeah, give it a read. This one is only about 200 or 300 pages long and this one is signed by the author. Yeah, I'm really thankful that the author decided to send this book to me. And Legends and Lattes by Travis Balgery has been signed to be traditionally published sometime within this year or maybe uh, next year. We'll see. I think they will come up with a new cover art but if not, if they decide to go with this as their cover art as well, I'm hoping that will be a hardback edition because I want this in hardback too. Then the next book that I got is King's Radiance by Luke Schultz. So this is a recent release and I talk about this book in my second episode of SFF Spotlight. So I'm not going to mention the premise again here and this actually looks like a pretty book. Look, this is the front page and I also want to show you this. Uh, this is the map. The map of Zapur, the setting of the series, I think this is a beautiful looking map. And also, I want to show you this, the chapter art, yeah. It seems like each character POV will have their own unique chapter art to it, and I love this kind of addition to my fantasy books. And I have actually heard from the author that this book, King's Radiance, One Piece is one of the main inspiration behind this, and yeah. That's all I need to hear, really. <laughs> the cover art of King's Radiance is done by Brush7, and if you love From Software games, I highly, highly recommend you to check out Brush7's artwork. Then the next one that I got is The Sun's Blood by Jeremy Bai. This is the first book in Heirs of Sun and Storm series, and this is a progression science fiction and fantasy series. So I haven't read anything by this author, but uh, the premise sounds interesting though. Immortal cultivators are outlaws. They are hunted and executed, and their magic is illegal. Anti-cultivation propaganda posters are plastered on every street corner. The counter-cultivation division investigates. The elite black corpses are sent in for the kill. None are spared. Mercy does not exist. But did the cultivators really bring the war of tribulation? Are they actually responsible for the heavenly curse? Are they truly the bloodthirsty psychopaths the government paints them to be? Wang Fan, a homicide detective, believes that officers like himself are tasked with championing the rights of the common citizens. But when a seemingly routine case goes awry, he finds himself dragged into the darkness of the cultivation world. By the time he realized the black corpses have the sniper rifles aimed at the back of his head, Wang Fan has no choice. He has to fight the system to survive. So this is published by Raidmark Creative and the cover art is done by Joshua Rafael, which is an artist uh, based in Indonesia just like me. And the cover art is designed by Sean T. King. Ta-da! It looks like this and believe me, this one is very thick. It's more than 700 pages long. So yeah, thank you so much to the author, Jeremy Bai, for sending me this, uh, this book. I'm looking forward to reading this one. And speaking of progression, science fiction, and fantasy, the next one that I got is A Thousand Lee, The First Step by Tao Wong. So this book, this series, has been recommended to me so many times, especially because I love Cradle by Will White. So I think this one is a cultivation and also Xianxia series, a progression fantasy series. It is written here that The First Step is the first novel in the Thousand Lee series, a book on cultivation, immortals, wondrous martial arts styles, and spirit beasts and will be loved by Wuxia and Xianxia fans. And if I'm not mistaken, this one will be 12 books long, just like Cradle series by Will White. Finally, the last book that I got, this is A Crown of Madness by Ryan Beatty. So this one, uh, this is a Witcher inspired fantasy book. I've read only the prologue and the premise of this book and I am very very convinced that this one, at least the beginning, is very very inspired by the Witcher. So the cover art looks so gorgeous though, look at this. This cover art is done by James Teagan of Bookfly Design and this is the map of the book. This is the first out of five books in the Grim Hunt series and I want to say thank you so much to the author for sending me this book. I haven't read this book yet, but if you love The Witcher, maybe take a look at this one. And before I end this video, I want to show you something that I got. And this one is not sent to me by a book publisher, but this is sent to me by The Black Piper. I think a lot of you who love Stormlight Archive know about this, uh, this soundtrack already. So this is uh, Kaladin. This is the soundtrack to the Stormlight Archive with music composed, orchestrated, and conducted by The Black Piper. And I'm really thankful that they sent me this copy. I mean, this is it's been a while since I got the CD, you know. <laughs> I think this soundtrack is meant to be used to accompany you while you're reading The Way of Kings. And yeah, 
I also got some bookmarks. This is a set of bookmarks by Botanikasu, uh, illustrated by Botanikasu, and they are uh, The Way of Kings inspired. So the album Kaladin has received a lot of great praises from readers and, well, listeners. And right now, The Black Piper is currently planning to do another book soundtrack, and this time it will be for the Lightbringer series by Bran Wick, so make sure to pay attention to that. I will be talking about this more in my SFF Spotlight once I have more details. So yeah, that's it for today's video. That's all the physical books that I got this month, and also the album that I got. <laughs> so do let me know what you think about my book haul this month, and let me know what books you got within the month of May. As always, thank you so much for watching, and thank you for your support. Bye-bye.